All right, good evening everybody. Sorry to make a video in the dark. This is just where I'm holding, driving home. Worked a little late today. And today was the first day of Bahab. For those who don't know, Bahab is a series of fasts, three fasts, that are Monday, Thursday, Monday, after Pesach and after Sukkot. But there has to pass a Shabbos that's not, uh, that's within the new month, but so either in the month of Cheshvan or the month of Iyar, the first Monday after the first Shabbos in the month that's not, and it can't be Shabbos Rish Chodesh, that uh, then you would bench Bahab, there's a Mishaberach to say, it's part of the Minog, and then after that, we have these three fast days. There's different customs. Some people will fast half the day, but not the whole day. Or some people will fast until Mincha, a dominant early Mincha, perhaps. Which I, I'm not saying this to brag, but that's what I did today. I don't know if I'm going to do it the rest of the time, but it's something I think is worthwhile, at least, especially next next week. It'll already be a clock change. And then there's slichas to say also for Bahab. There's some controversy about saying the slichas for Bahab because they mention as a tiny tzibur, and it's not really observed as a tiny tzibur. Some people said you should change the nusach to tefillah tzibur, but even so, uh, most people maybe are not even saying the, the slichas either. Different minhagim. A lot of the yeshivas they say the slichas, but they don't fast. Among many chassidim, some say slichas and some don't. By Reb Moshe Feinstein, the minhag was to say avinu malkeno, but not to say slichas. I'm not sure about fasting. Maybe half the day. I wasn't I'm not sure. There's different reasons given why to fast Bahav. It seems it's first of all most of it's an Ashkenazi minhag. Not really something to disfart it or macabre. Some say that the reason for it is to atone for whatever sins one might have committed during Cholamoyed because you had free time and things could happen that are inappropriate, and so we have to fast to atone for those things. Um, Others say that it's because of the change in the seasons that it's for health reasons. Certainly we can look at the Aesara that we're ex experiencing now in the world and see that even if one doesn't fast every year, if one is healthy enough to fast, maybe one should fast as a, a, a day of uh, prayer and fasting on behalf of America and the world. Particularly we see the second Bahab is actually falling on the day before election day. So of course we can fast and pray on behalf of our great president that he should win re-election. But then the other issue we have here is that it might be dangerous to fast because of the pandemic and so for that reason it might be better not to fast but even if not fasting but to spend time in prayer and reflection to say the slichas or to say avinu malkeinu to say some extra tehillim I know the Chabas Yoyer, my holy Zayda had in, in the has special tchinas for Bahab also I did not say that today I'll be honest kind of regret that, I want to maybe find those, try to make time, I know they have them on Safari, but there's some issues using Safari at my work that I can, if I have the direct link to that page, that works, but, so I'll have to look on Google, 
believe it's 238 would be the... The tshuva that contains all the tachinas and smiras and so on and so forth at the end of the Sefer. In any event, I think we should take this time at least as a serious time. If we can't fast, maybe to give us a doka and so forth and to recognize this day. But also, I would say the truth is that if it's considered to be a sagula for health, and whether it's a spiritual sagula for health or an actual physical remedy to engage in the health benefits of fasting, I believe if someone has the energy to do so, it, it certainly is worthwhile, or at least half the day, something like that. But certainly, certainly, to dedicate this coming Monday as a day of prayer on behalf of America and the whole world. You know, I hear people say things like, uh, none of it matters, it's all in God's hands. Well, that's, I, I heard it this morning uh, that... Dennis Prager, he was confronting, there was a Christian who called him and said that a friend of his believed this, that there's no point in voting because it's all in God's hands. And his question to him was, so ask your friend, you know, if, if he could have voted against Hitler, would he have voted or not, you know, if he had that opportunity? Is he going to say, well, it's all in God's hands? Even if it, it, and even so, don't we have a responsibility to do what we have to do to try to make things better? And it's very clear that the ideology that the Democrats have embraced, and really they've been working on this for decades to get to this point, would utterly destroy this country and transform it into a brand new country. And this, this is the question we have to ask. Because to me, you know, I listened to Larry Arn, who's the president of Hillsdale College, he said America is the youngest country, but the oldest country. It's the youngest country because it's, it's a new country, right? It's only, it's less than 300 years old. Right? And all these other countries, of France and Germany and, and Great Britain and Italy and India and China and Japan and all of these, they, they have long histories that go back very far. And America doesn't have that. We have a very short history compared to those other countries. I think a much more significant history to a certain extent, but a much briefer history than those other countries. That's on one hand, but on the other hand, let's look at France, for example. France, I think they're already on their sixth republic, and in between that, they had an empire, and didn't they have a brief return to monarchy, if I'm not mistaken? I could be mistaken. The point is, the French form of government that exists today is less than 70 years old. I think just about 60 or uh, 55 years old, if not mistaken. I believe it's from the 1960s. Is that what we want to see? Meaning, uh, do we want to have a revolution where we fundamentally transform this country or not? And with all due honesty, if you vote for the Democrats, that's what you're getting. You're going to get the, the, the Sixth French Republic. You're going to get the new, a new republic, not the one that was founded by, by our founding fathers. And if they want to be honest, that's what they want, so tell us. But they refuse to be honest because they know that that's not what the people want. 
so they lie and lie and lie. The same thing all these other countries. These are really brand new young countries, much younger than the United States. The reason the United States lasted is because of the brilliance of our Constitution. There's a certain elasticity to the Constitution that yet remains within this rubric of our Constitution. That we're not transformed into something totally foreign and different. We maintain this basic structure of our government. And if, if something comes along, we tweak it. But there's a difficult process of the amendment process to change the Constitution. It's not a simple thing to do. And that's how we accomplish it. That's why America is the oldest country. Because we're not, you know, we're not Greece that has the ancient Greek legacy. We do have the ancient American, you know, Native American legacy. But what's unique about America is not the language or the culture or the topography or the geography, but rather it's our constitution. That's why I've said many times on these videos, and I'll say it again. To me, one of the most offensive things that President Ob Barack Obama did in his tenure, symbolically, I mean, he did horrible things that were actually damaging, but that was fundamentally offensive was when he ch officially changed the name of Mount McKinley to Denali. Why? Not, and I don't mean this as a to disrespect the Native American peoples. But he meant it, I don't believe, to honor the Native American peoples, but to show disrespect and contempt for our constitutional republic. And so the fact that a president under the second article of our constitution executive branch under our constitutional form of government, a man who had that office, had that, had the mountain named after him because of his office as president, that is something that President Obama wanted to show disrespect to because of his utter contempt and disrespect for our founding and for our constitution. And so that's why he, he wanted to make the point that America is a country like any other country. And so he wanted to hearken back to the ancient as aspects of America. In that way, so how are we any different than the Greeks who have their ancient Greek uh, traditions and the Chinese who have their ancient Chinese traditions, etc., etc.? So we have the Native American people. Understood. I have total respect for the Native American people. But what makes America special is our Constitution. And so to take off the name of a U.S. President and hearken back to an ancient name is a way of saying that America is not exceptional. The truth of the matter is that Chazal say... That a sage is stronger, more powerful than a prophet. Niriya Kodesh explains that common sense and logic is more important than revealed religion. And the truth of the matter is, this country it was, it was the first country founded upon common sense and logic. Thomas Paine wrote the book, Common Sense. Because he wanted to bring out the power of common sense. And the, the left wants to rob us of that. And say that we're just like anybody else. And turn us into any other European country. And forget about our American exceptionalism. But the truth of the matter is, all of those countries depend on us. 
we're like Reagan said, and he was uh, paraphrasing from the Christian books that they call the New Testament, that America is a shining city on the hill. And uh, like Bono from U2, he loves America because America is an idea, not just a piece of land. And it's an idea that the light of America can shine on other countries. And if the, if we elect the Democrats, that light is going to be is going to go out because forever the Democrats have been trying to destroy this country since the Civil War. And it's not one way; it's another. They're enemies of this country. They're enemies of this union. And they are trying to destroy the foundations of this union. And so they use this ruse of their own inherent racism that they express with their ex uh, with their obsession with identity politics in order to divide and conquer. They don't care about all of these demographic groups that they claim to care about, they care about their votes, and they don't even they, they, and they don't even care so much about their votes. I mean, look at Kamala Harris; she was in Cleveland. She's like, well, "Are we in Cleveland? Where are we?" Because she doesn't care about the people of Cleveland; she cares about their votes. Joe Biden talks about Scranton, Scranton, Scranton. When does he come to Scranton if he's not looking for a vote? not going to, to, the Jewish film to the Jewish food festival in, in Naywalk Park, right? It would have been cute if he showed up there, no? Nobody would have cared. So this, really is this, this is what we've got. And by the way, Joe Biden is a racist. Joe Biden is a bigot. I have a video that I've been posting on social media where... Joe Biden is thanking a certain left-wing Jewish group for fighting against orthodoxy. He hates the orthodox. He is a horrible person. And it would be a big disaster for America if Joe Biden would become the next president because he would just be a puppet for the communists who want to destroy this country. And we can't let it happen. Thank you for watching and listening. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. And we'll be in touch later.